now what happens is the most important thing to understand once this is done okay so let's say you have taken a firewall you have taken two interface say interface number one interface number two this is going to outside this is your inside you have placed the security level as 100 over here you have placed the security level as zero over here because of the trust concept right and whatever ip whatever i say 11 and 10 whatever is there think about it so now by default what happens that is a default traffic flow there's a concept of now traffic flow there are two kinds of traffic flow that you can initiate or you can work with your ASF firewalls. One is called as through traffic and one is called as to traffic, right? Through means the traffic that is passing through the firewall or it is a transit traffic. So say some traffic is passing from your inside network to outside, that means the traffic should traverse the firewall from one port to other port and go outside. That is called as a through traffic. To traffic are generally your management traffic generally saying they're your management traffic right which is actually you know <clears throat> pointed to the interface of the firewall so from the inside users if somebody wants to you know telnet this interface or ssh this interface or you know uh, gather some sort of you know console access or management access i mean those are called as the two two traffic so telnet access to the interface or ssh access to the interface might be http https access as well right so through traffic is generally the transit traffic okay now by default on this firewall interfaces as a two traffic what is allowed is only icmp so icmp is allowed by default so icmp is allowed by default okay so you will not have any other service you know that is allowed apart from icmp that means if somebody some user over here say 10.11.11.99 if he wants to ping this interface say this interface ip is 10.11.11.10 from here if he wants to send icmp request he will be getting the icmp response because by default icmp services are there on the firewall interface but if this user wants to telnet or SSH this particular IP address, they cannot do that because telnet, SSH, HTTP, HTTPS, those services are you know, blocked by default or, or it is not there by default. Okay, same thing. Same thing even on the outside port. What happens is ICMP is there on any interface by default on the firewall. So people can ping the interface and check the connectivity with the firewall ports. Okay, so if you want to enable telnet SSH, HTTP access on the firewall interface, they are generally configured using a property called a service. So you will be configuring not ACL, you'll be configuring something called a service. I will teach you how to configure service in a moment. Hold on for that. Might be we will see that tomorrow, the remote management stuff, but understand today that you configure, you know, something called a service on the interface to allow two traffic. And by default, ICMP is the only protocol that is allowed on the interface. Now regarding transit traffic, so traffic that is actually traversing the firewall from one zone to other zone. You can see this names also as zone information. Okay. So let us say we are sending a traffic from, you know, inside to outside that is, that is transiting. So by default, what happens is any traffic, any traffic which is traversing from high security level to low security level are allowed are allowed so if there is any traffic which is getting initiated from your inside to outside that is going from high security level to low security level any traffic is allowed pressurize on this word any traffic that means what http https dns telnet ICMP, whatever you want to send from inside to outside that is traversing security level high to low, any traffic is allowed to travel through the firewall. 
provided the routing table entry is there. So if 1011 wants to reach some destination and regarding destination, the firewall don't have a routing entry, the packet will be dropped. But if the routing table entry says, yes, I know where is the destination in my routing table. That means I will allow the traffic, you know, from the high SQ or high security level to low security level. Not only this, once any traffic is getting allowed, especially the TCP based traffic and the UDP based traffic, they are inspected. They are inspected and all TCP and UDP traffic, they will have a stateful entry into a table called as a connection table. So if I am sending HTTP traffic or let us say telnet traffic, right, which is going from inside to outside, it is allowed by default. And what will happen? This traffic will have a connection table entry when the traffic was traversing through. And in the connection table, you will normally keep the return entry of the traffic. You normally keep the return entry of the traffic. So for example, if the source of the traffic was X, it was trying to go to Y. Okay. So in the connection table, what will have is you know, the you know, reflexive entry. So now, you know, the firewall knows that that, okay, X went to Y. So I should, uh, allow this traffic because it is going from high to low security level. And also if it is a TCP traffic, I should keep this entry in the connection table. So in the connection table, it will write down what that I will allow Y to talk back to X, the, the return entry. Okay. Along with the port numbers, along with the port numbers. So I will show this in practical. It will make much more sense, but theoretically try to understand this very important stuff. So make sure that all traffic is allowed by default from high security to low security. What is allowed by default is TCP UDP based traffic are inspected, but anything else apart from TCP UDP, they will not be into the connection table. So for example, if you are sending now ICMP traffic, right, which is from inside to outside, your ICMP traffic does not fall under the category of TCP UDP, right? Because ICMP is the own layer three protocol. So those information of ICMP will not go in the connection table. All right. So this is very, very important to understand. Now, can any traffic come from outside to inside? The answer is no. If there is any traffic which is getting initial, initiated from outside, and if they are trying to traverse the fire, firewall and come inside, by default, what happens is the firewall will deny that on the outside port itself. The first big, big reason is, you know, it is going from a uh, security level, which is low to high. So any traffic, any traffic that is coming from low security level, which is going to high security level are blocked by default, are blocked by default. Now, if you want to allow some traffic, which is getting initiated on the outside and they want to reach inside, for example, you have to write down explicit ACL for that, right? So you can allow this traffic manually by writing what? Explicit access control list statements. And these things will be actually the focus of your study during the ASA courses. But understand this, you know, by default, nothing is allowed to come from outside to DMZ or outside to inside. The traffic is getting initiated from the outside world. But every, but, but if the traffic is initiated from DMZ to outside or inside to outside, the traffic can go. And also the TCP UDP based traffic will be inspected and there will be a connection table maintained for TCP based traffic. All right. We'll talk more about it, more and more about it. So as a basic thing, I hope it is clear to everybody.